Welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. This season we're filming in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. I'm here at The Natural Bridge in Natural Bridge, Virginia. And now we're in the kitchen. Um, Godfrey, what you got cooking? To the berry knocker. Berry knocker. Welcome to the story of cooking and today we're going to have a party. We're going to be making classic Virginian appetizers for the party that's going to happen later and then some of my friends are going to stop by and we're going to mix up some Virginia cocktails as well. Should be a lot of fun. The first recipe we're going to do is peanut soup and peanuts in Virginia go hand in hand all along the southern part of Virginia. We always pass a bunch of places to buy peanuts and we always have to stop and buy some. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat our pan and add a half a cup of butter. So butter and Virginia go hand in hand. So let that melt for a second and we're going to saute a Vidalia onion which makes the soup a little sweet because Vidalia onions are sweeter than your normal yellow onions. And we're going to also add some celery. And we're going to let that go until the onions and the celery are softened and the onions are translucent. All right, two cloves of minced garlic. And just kind of let that marry with the other ingredients for about 30 seconds. Stir it in. And then we're going to add some flour. Stirring constantly until it's browned. And it shouldn't take that long. Okay, let it all dissolve and brown up a little bit. And then the next thing we're gonna add is our chicken stock. We have two cups of chicken stock. All right, actually I think I measured that incorrectly. I need four cups of chicken stock. Sorry about that guys. All right, and now we're gonna bring this up to a simmer and let it go for about half an hour. All right, we've been simmering for 30 minutes and we are ready for the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna add our peanut butter, which is the main ingredient in peanut butter soup. All right, stir that in and we're gonna stir in some celery salt as well and a tablespoon of lemon. And use creamy peanut butter. You could use chunky. I guess you could use whatever you really you wanted, but I like the creamy, creamy type of peanut butter. And just squeeze about a tablespoon in there. Catch the seeds with your hands. I'm gonna take the whole lemon. All right, and stir that till it's all incorporated. I'm actually gonna use a whisk because that's easier to get that peanut butter broken up. And that's it. You can eat it hot, you can eat it cold. Very versatile and good for a party. We're going to put them in little shooter glasses so people can walk around sipping their soup and their cocktails. We're going to top each of the shooter glasses and the soup with a little crushed peanuts. Up next, we're going to make Virginia ham croquettes. So we have everything ready for our Virginia ham croquettes and these are just a really, it's easy to do. It looks like we have a lot of complication going on here, but they are cheese and breadcrumbs and ham all fried and you kind of can just pop them in your mouth for a, for a party. Has some potatoes in there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to saute our onion in a little butter. And you can use, these are just yellow onions, you could use Vidalia onions. Alright, those kind of do their thing for a second. We have our potatoes that were already cooked. Um, these are just russet potatoes that we boiled and they're kind of ready to, like you would be making mashed potatoes. We're already softened and ready to be mashed. So we're going to add those to our mixing bowl over here. And we're going to mash them. Get these out of the way. Putting this in. We have a potato masher. 
Just mash them like you're making mashed potatoes. Same process. We're going to add a little butter, just like you were making mashed potatoes. About a tablespoon of butter. Mash that in as well. To this mixture, we're going to add some cream. And once they're mashed, I'm going to use a spoon because that's easier. And we're going to add salt and pepper. Don't oversalt this because remember, we're dealing with Virginia ham, which is very, very salty. It's the distinctive flavor in Virginia ham. So just a little pinch. All right. And then to this mixture, we are going to add our onions. If they've softened, it looks like they are. Pour those right into the bowl. Okay, mix those up real good. We have some green onions or chops, whichever you prefer. It just adds a nice color to your croquettes. Our Virginia ham, of course, which is already cooked. It's a cured meat, but we sauteed it in a pan. And stir all that together. All right, and then we're going to add some cheese. I have Fontina here, but you can use any kind of cheese you like. Aged cheddar, aged white cheddar is good. Um, just something that melts really well. And it's a lot of cheese. Helps bind it all together. Cheese and ham, it's kind of a classic pairing. Okay, now for assembly. It looks like our oil is almost there. It's a three-part process and you're going to get dirty. That's okay. The first thing you're going to roll the croquettes in is flour. And then they're going to be dipped in just eggs that have been beaten. And then the last thing is breadcrumbs. And you can use seasoned breadcrumbs. These are just panko breadcrumbs. You can use Whatever you think is going to taste good. Okay, let me show you how it's done. You can also make them as big or as little as you want. I kind of just like to make them about the size of a golf ball. And again, make sure you get all of the different parts to it. Because you want everybody to taste all of that goodness. Just dredge it a little bit in the flour. Use my fork here for the egg mixture and then drop it in the breadcrumbs and coat it. And then place it in the hot oil gently so you don't splatter yourself. And let it fry up until it's golden brown. I'm gonna keep frying up the croquettes and when we come back, we're gonna make an apple fennel goat cheese tart. So we have everything ready to make our apple fennel goat cheese tart. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna Saute the shallots in some butter, which is over here. And, oh, we're also going to add our fennel as well, I'm sorry. Saute our shallots and our fennel in some butter, and you want them to kind of caramelize. So it's going to take, take a few minutes to do, for sure. And slice them thin, because that'll, things will work faster, get to your party sooner. All right. So you just saute these up until they're caramelized. These look pretty good. So I'm going to start on the other part of this recipe. Turn that off. We have melted butter that we're going to add some apples to. And the reason, I didn't tell you why we're doing this. The reason why we're using apples in this recipe is because that too is very Virginian. Especially around the Winchester area. Mix that up with a little bit of salt and pepper. All right. I'm going to set all this aside so I can show you how to actually assemble the tart. Take a pan that's lined with parchment paper. And I'm just using puff pastry that I bought at the store. 
You can make your own, but puff pastry is pretty difficult, and this tastes just as good, so why not? You want to let it unthaw a little bit so you can actually work with it. It comes frozen. It's in your frozen food section. So you just lay one sheet out on a cookie sheet, like so. Very simple. And make sure there's no cracks. Just kind of push it down with your hands, push those little cracks together. And then we're going to take another sheet, and we're going to use this as our border. So we're going to cut this one. Just little strips, because it's going to go around the outside, so we have a pretty border that will puff up even bigger than the tart, which will look nice. They got to be about yay wide. You can really do it however you want. You could even use a pie crust and kind of pile everything in the center and then kind of just fold the sides. That would be pretty as well. And pie crusts are a little easier to make than puff pastry. All right, let's see if that'll work. So, you want to kind of wet the edges. I have some water here. Wet the edges just so the puff pastry will stick to the sides, like so. This will make a beautiful presentation for any party. And you also want to save the tops of your fennel. You cook the bulb, but you want to save the tops so you can top them at the end after the tart's baked and it just looks really nice. All right. So we're just making a border. Cut that end off there. And it looks like we're wasting a lot of dough. Don't throw any of it away. You can always roll it out, use it for something else, all your little scraps. One last one. The next thing we're going to do, real simple. We take our onion or shallot mixture, just put it in the center, and just spread it out. Just try to stay within those borders that we just made. So we're going to keep it in the oven until the puff pastry is cooked and it's puffed up and everything looks golden. And then when it comes out, we're going to top it with the goat cheese and the fennel fronds. I'm going to do that, pop it in the oven, and when we come back, we're going to make some Virginia cocktails. So we are ready to make some cocktails because it's a cocktail episode after all, so we need to make some Virginia cocktails. I'm here with my brother, Kenny who is an excellent cocktail maker. So Thank he's gonna you. help me out. Hello everyone. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make a Virginia not so gentlemanly cocktail using Virginia bourbon. And why it's not so gentlemanly is because it's actually pink and it has berries in it. It's, it's fruity. Got, it's fruity, it's got three types of berries. It's got blackberries, cranberries, and it's got Chambord, which is a raspberry liqueur. So it's actually, it's a healthy drink. It's got a lot of berries. Absolutely, nutrition is paramount. <laughs> Okay, so let's take two glasses. You're going to make it with me. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to muddle some blackberries in the bottom. And these are our... Muddlers. <laughs> our muddlers for the day. Thank you. Need some more? Sure. How, how uh, not so gentlemanly do you want it? All right, so muddle it in the bottom. So Kenny, what's your favorite Virginia cocktail drink? Just good old bourbon, Sarah Kate. Well, that's what we're going to add. We're going to add some good old Virginia... Virginia not so gentlemanly bourbon. Is All that right. muddled enough? Our muddlers are kind of lackluster. Not muddling. Here. That's okay. Perfect. It's, it's all going to taste good in the end. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to let you do it. We're going to add two ounces of Virginia bourbon. That's right. It's a stiff drink, but also a healthy drink. This is a two ounce shot glass, so you just had to. You can make mine a little weaker. Oh, come on. Where's the fun in that? That's true. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. you poured a little in your glass, too, so that works. Okay, so that was Virginia bourbon. Use Virginia bourbon. It's a Virginia episode. And now we're going to put a ha um, half a shot glass, one ounce of Chambord, into our glasses. 
So do that for me, please, sir. I will. Done. It's an oddly <laughs> it's an shaped bottle. bottle. And you can make this in a big pitcher and just serve it up at your party. We're just we're making sure it's okay for the party goers. Or just starting the fun early. I don't know which. Starting the fun early. Okay, and then we're going to add, let's just top it off with some cranberry juice. And do you like ice? I do. Let's add ice. I prefer ice in my drink. I'm using my hands. Did you drink? Have you been partaking in drinks? Already? I know, it must have been. All right, I like a little squeeze of lime in mine. You? Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Er, okay. So what do we have here? This is the Virginia Not So Gentleman Lee cocktail. All right, stir it up, stir yours. Take a sip. Oh, that is cheers. Pretty tasty, yum. That is really good. All right, sorry, you have to finish that later because oh, we have another on. cocktail to make before the people get here. We're gonna make a classic Virginia mint julep. Do you know what goes in a mint julep? I do not, please explain. Virginia bourbon. Awesome. So we need four ounces of bourbon. That's right, four ounces of bourbon. Oh, no, wait, hold on, I messed up. We want to, the first thing in a mint julep is the mint. And there's actually a kind of a cool story about this. It was said, you can tell how gentlemanly a gentleman, Virginia gentleman was by how much mint grew around his grave and probably tell how much mint juleps he drank in his lifetime. It's just, I mean, obviously not true, but it's a cool story. Okay, so four ounces of Virginia bourbon, please, sir. Oh, hold off, we're gonna muddle first. We gotta muddle again. All right, now pour the bourbon as you muddle. As I muddle? Yeah. That's gotta, gonna be pretty tough, Sarah. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. Party people are coming. Hang right on. All right, I'll muddle while you pour mine. Thank you. You just wanna smash the mint, get those mint flavors in there. Okay, two ounces will work. We'll make a weak one, we'll, we'll increase the uh, bourbon as we go. And then you're just going to add simple syrup, which is just half sugar and half water. I like mine sweet, obviously. And that's it. Yum. Thank you. Virginia mint julep. Cheers. Mm. So good. I love mint. Oh, man, that's fantastic. All right. So it's almost party time. Can you make these drinks for the rest of the people? I can handle that. All right. When we come back, I'm going to have the party guests make one of their favorite Virginia cocktails. So I grabbed three of my favorite party goers as they walked in the door because I thought this would be a fun activity to do. We have all sorts of Virginia ingredients. Well, some aren't so Virginian, but some are. And I'm going to have each of them make their signature Virginia cocktail, which they just found out. So don't freak out, people. It's going to be good because we have good ingredients. <laughs> so go for it. And Heather, kind of tell me what you're doing as you're doing it. Okay, I'm going to make a grapefruit shine. I'm going to start with some ice cubes. Do you even have a name for it? I already? have a name for it. And I'm going to start with a very healthy dose of your moonshine lemon basil. With the pooch, basil. As leaf. I call it. And I'm going to dip in there and get some basil out. This is, this is already tough to beat. Kind of start <laughs> with a little bit of grapefruit juice here. Oh my goodness. And then I'm gonna just top it off with a little bit of soda water. Okay. Garnishing with a couple of oh my gosh. blackberries. And it was so good, it overflowed. All right. <laughs> You're on the oh Ladies my. first. Okay, mm. I think I'm gonna go with some berries though, some fruity um, drink. I'm gonna start with some ginger ale. And I need to use the Chambord because this smells delicious. Yeah, that's top shelf yes. awesome stuff. Yes, and I don't know how much I'm going to put in, just enough to make it look pretty. Have you noticed that nobody is using measuring? No, you need shot glasses. I gave you these shot glasses. No. Stronger the better. It just makes it better. Yes. No, I agree. And then I'm going to add a little bit of orange juice. Mm-hmm. And Easy. I also no, want you to top know. off with um, some blackberries, please. Okay. Thank you. All right, and we also have some ice if anybody needs ice. Yeah, I'm gonna throw in a couple ice cubes just to Switch. chill it off. Thank you. All right, that's where I'm gonna stick. All right, Ryan. All right, so Make let it me good. see here. I'll uh, start off with some ice over And this is here. a fun party activity, so do it at, do it at your parties. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Um, fun when you get a drink. I'm gonna <laughs> steal some of this. I didn't even say who my party goers were. I'm so rude. This is Heather, Ryan, and Shannon. Sticking my fingers in there. You're such a copycat. 
I know I am. I'm sorry. I know some of the chambord. Oh my goodness. I want to add a little color to it. That's why. I know. Okay. Because you couldn't add color with the cranberry juice, you had to add it with the chambord. It's all about the alcohol content. The color also helps brighten your mm-hmm. boots during the winter blues season. It does. So I'll you know what we're actually going to do? We're all going to taste this and decide which is going to be our third cocktail for the party. So Ooh. people Ooh. are actually going to consume these later, and including yourselves. Booze and Real. All right, what did you just add? You added lime added and lemon? I added lemon, and I added some uh, one of the blackberries, and I, I topped it off with the uh, ginger. ginger ale. So now we have to taste to see which is our third drink at the party, and we're going to judge on presentation and taste. Okay? So Heather, you want to go first? Bottoms up. All right. Cheers. Cheers. I taste more of the alcohol than anything. Oh, yes. <laughs> I do too. Mm-hmm. But it's actually, it's, good. it's kind it's of good. refreshing. Yeah, mm-hmm. have good grapefruit. I taste the basil. Mm-hmm. We only have four glasses, so you can either, let's just dump it back in the head. Oh, unless you finished it. Okay, mm-hmm. who's up next? That's really good. That's really good. This is really good. Good job, this girls. Can be yummy. deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> Super yummy. It looks a little bit like mud, but it tastes really good. Okay, I can drink. I can drink all of this. That's excellent. That's, that's very good. <laughs> Thank, nice you. Thank you. Definitely Thank you. Yours. Mm-hmm. Okay, your turn, Ryan. <laughs> So what do we think? I don't know. It's a tough call. This is good I'm gonna stuff. vote for Shannon. Um, okay, you I can think vote for yourself. Presentation, I think the grapefruit shine gets it. Okay. For taste, I will go with Shannon's drink. But you gotta come up with a name. I oh, that's I, true. I know. We do need to come up with a name. I'm pretty bad about that part. But I think presentation, I'm gonna go with this here. I, that was a beautiful looking mm-hmm. drink. Presentation um, is worth less than taste. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I enjoyed this drink's taste, though. Okay, so let's all come up with a name, quick. All right. It's a it's berry. A ginger berry. Berry knocker. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh a berry, berry knocker. knocker. To the berry knocker. Berry knocker. knocker. Thank you so much, guys. It's been fun. Let's get to the party. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. Until next time, keep the story going.